Um, thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon. Uh, my name is Mor Asia. I'm the founding partner of iAngels. I'm going to tell you a little bit about iAngels and then um, we'll review some of uh, kind of like highlights in VC funding that we've recognized uh, as part of our research at iAngels. Um, so about five years ago, my partner Shelly and I founded iAngels with the hopes of changing Israeli, uh, the VC landscape as we know it. By creating a very unique hybrid model between, catering between a platform and a VC, we were able to take Israeli tech to global accredited individual investors all over the world. By leveraging decades of experience working on the corporate side of blue chip companies, we were able to provide the best practices and professional due diligence to investors looking to engage that simply didn't have a partner on the ground to do it until then. As we grew over the years to a network 20,000 investors strong, we provide our investee companies not only with capital, but also bringing to the table investors who are strategic investors, tapping the iAngels network for potential customers or business partners. And this is some, something that we like to call um, the iAngels influence. So until now, we raised about $140 million and invested in about 100 companies across traditional VC and blockchain tech. This positioned us as one of the top three most active VCs in Israel. Now, our unique value proposition lies on three fundamentals. One, market access. So not only do we enjoy a proprietary deal flow from our position in the market, but we also conduct ongoing research and analysis on our dynamic ecosystem and reach out and create investment opportunities even before they mature. Number two, co-investment strategy. So we like to co-invest and we believe that this method of funding provides the companies with a strong syndicate of investors. So more people around the table who are helping companies grow and scale. Lastly, de-risk strategy that revolves around the fact that investors are able to choose and, and create for themselves a diversified portfolio of high-tech startups, thereby able to either align to their risk profile or their de-risking strategies. Now, we invest in key themes that we have developed an expertise in, and today I'd like to highlight three of those uh, themes uh, and share and explore together some of the dynamics and contributors to the funding uh, trends these booming themes have experienced over the course of the last couple of years. So these three themes that we're going to highlight are, one, AI, two, transportation and autonomous vehicles, and number three, fintech and blockchain. Now, while AI and the automotive industry are exploding, taking center stage in every conversation, fintech has actually been on the decline in terms of VC investments in Israel, and blockchain taking a hefty chunk of the pie as they're consistently uh, increasing in, in, in migration of capital and investments. Now, when we look at consistent or growth in funding, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're talking about more deals. I mean, if we're looking at the automotive industry, for instance, in 2016, there were 26 deals funded, amounting to $321 million. In 2017, there were 25 deals, amounting to $528 million. So one less deal and approximately 40% increase in total funding. So when we consider this, this actually means that the average ticket for VC funding is growing, and this aligns perfectly with the trend that we've experiencing in the industry lately of consistently growing valuations. So that VCs who are looking to create for themselves a similar position or similar ownership in these companies now have to shell out substantially more money. Now, AI, they've been you know, on the rise as well, and I think that if, if you know, several years ago it was literally just a buzzword, today companies cannot really consider their growth strategies without taking this cornerstone into consideration as the Facebooks and the Googles and everybody is really looking to make significant acquisitions in this space and looking to get hands on everything AI. Now taking a closer look into automotive, um, 
we can see that although we ex expect kind of like the first autonomous vehicles to hit the roads no earlier than 2020, still there's an abundance of Israeli technology companies catering to that space. And what's even more unique is the fact that they have very unique expertise in the delicate scene between hardware and software. So Israeli engineers are coming from companies like Elbit Systems, Intel, uh, Motorola, with years of experience on chips, and with Israel's being you know, the, the front-runner front in uh, software, this makes Israel into a hub of automotive innovation. Um, and across, by the way, many subsectors. So we can look at ADAS uh, systems and localization, cybersecurity data. We see that although very early in the race, still Israel has been enjoying an acquisitive dynamic from OEMs, tier ones, and straight on software giants looking to come to Israel and significant acquisitions in their uh, uh, hopes to achieve the level three and level four automation. Okay, next, next is AI. Now, why is everybody so fascinated with AI? Everybody's constantly talking about it. Well, I know that what made me click was the realization that if, you know, when we just started iAngel several years ago, everybody was talking about, you know, we had entrepreneurs doing PhDs in machine learning and companies really teaching machines how to think. So people were teaching machines how to think, creating protocols, uh, algorithms, and piling on huge amounts of data um, so that with extensive compute power, machines will be able to make deterministic conclusions. Now today, we're talking about that next gen. So machines are teaching machines how to think. So machines are teaching machines how to think and creating a second tier, or maybe a second exponent of AI innovation making man redundant in that process. And man is not only redundant in the process of teaching machines how to think, because we've already been experiencing and, and showcasing a lot of companies that um, help uh, um, remove the man from the value chain in terms of communication, like chatbots and you know, uh, things like you know, your bank teller or your cashier at the supermarket, et cetera. But even now we're talking about considerably more sophisticated um, solutions that are going to rely heavily on AI things and closer in, in kind of like our verticals of life, things like in healthcare, um, in education, and in safety critical um, systems, such as the autonomous vehicles that we just described. So this is all very exciting. And with about 10 times more funding flowing into AI in 2017 than in 2016, the world is showing us they can't get enough of Israeli AI. Now, the third segment is FinTech, which is very interesting in my eyes, because Although on the, global, on the global trend, fintech has been on the increase probably like 20% year over year in the last several years, mainly around uh, significant B2B innovations for insurance or payments. In Israel, it's actually been on significant decline in the last recent years, uh, with 20% decline just in 2017. But if we look at the blockchain uh, investments, or if we consider kind of like the overall ICO um, dynamic, just in 2017, there were over $5 billion invested in 900 ICOs, and Israel's contrib contribution was about $500 million into 17 ICOs. So does that mean that um, an average Israeli ICO is six times bigger than its global counterpart? What does it mean when we consider that there are many entrepreneurs here that have started working on this space in 2012, 2013, when it was still kind of like a dirty word to talk about blockchain and Bitcoin? Is this all a coincidence or a coin incidence? I don't think so, because the way that I consider blockchain is that we're really going to see a parallel world forming. Um, blockchain is not only going to be applicative to financial products, like we've been seeing financial transactions or lending. We're going to see it take over a lot of different types of verticals that we didn't consider before, like how organizations are formed, how they're governed, um, things like security or real estate. We see really a shift of a lot of uh, uh, new innovation heading towards um, the blockchain to enjoy some of the fundamentals like transparency and decentralization that the blockchain uh, offers. 
Now, this is just the beginning as far as blockchain is concerned, because to date, we've just scraped the tip of the iceberg of the infrastructure layer that will be the foundation of future applications to come. And this is going to be probably big as the invention of electricity or the internet. And we're still looking at Israel, like all eyes are on Israel, to come forward with some of these innovating uh, schemes and, and show the world um, what exactly we're capable of. If you'd like to learn more about our research or investment opportunities, uh, please feel free to reach out to me or to our INGES representatives in the booth outside on the left, or go directly to www.iangels.co. Thank you for listening today. <laughs>